When students get off the bus at the Bridgestone Environmental Education Classroom and Habitat, it might seem like just another field trip. The other class come out here. But this is more than just a field trip. <laughs> Y'all are going to be scientists today and uh, these clipboards have your directions on them. It's an educational adventure. <laughs> Whoa, there it is right there. Keep an eye on it. And on top of the armor, there is what? Because it's a mammal. Hair. They're scientists when they come here. And they have a mission. They have certain things that they have to learn. I have lesson plans for the lab classroom where we are and for the center's classroom and for the teaching trail. Everybody will look here and I want you to remember the tracks you see and then when we get to the end, we'll talk about all the different stuff you saw, okay? From observing animal tracks in a sand pit. What kind of tracks do we see heading up through there? Coyote, right? You can feel his belly's a little bit softer. To touching Steve the snake. And he's not really kissing you. What's he doing with his tongue? Smelling. He is smelling that, that because snakes have a Jacobson organ and they smell with their tongues. And conducting their own scientific experiments. Every activity at Beach is designed to improve the students' questioning abilities and communication skills. The adaptations are its teeth so it can bite through nuts. The kind of stuff that we should put in our compost are, are living things like uh, apples and oranges, organic things. Y'all know what organic things are? While at the same time teaching them science principles they'll be tested on at the end of the school year. Does anybody know what kind of energy the sun is putting off? You said it. What did you say? Rays. Yeah, ra rays, and it's called radiant energy. If you're third grade, you learn about pollinators. You learn about plants. And what is a stem? Is a stem a stem on a tree, or is it just on a flower? Where do they get their nourishment? How do the flowers and how do the lily pads grow up through the water? All those kind of things, believe it or not, tie into the standards that they have to meet in school. You know, one of the best things about teaching kids outside is that everything they see and touch and feel in a natural environment is an opportunity to learn. We have a log out there that's got tons of life on it, it's got mosses, it's got lichens on it, and you can really use that to kind of help implement the, you know, ideas of commensalism, like things living off of other things and the beneficial relationships between the two. When you're learning it in school, you don't get to touch it or nothing. Children learn by playing. Even as we get older, we still like to be hands-on, and it just builds better connections in your brain when you touch it first. I think people learn easier when it's fun. They get into it and start having fun, then they start to know it better. If you see it in a book, you read about it, you write the vocabulary word, you know, maybe you can spout the information back now. But in a couple years from now, that's probably going to get pushed behind all this other stuff that you have to learn. But if you have that hands-on experience to remember and draw back on, and then they'll remember it for the test, and then they'll remember it on into life. No, that's, actually that's a buzzer. We had a hawk that came down and landed. It's a little bit different. The, the buzzer's a scavenger. But just as important as the science lessons. Frogs and toads are amphibians. What does this mean? Do you know what that means? Is the opportunity for these kids to simply get outside. The very first thought when we started this was we've got to get kids outside. Kids are inside a lot. We're in a rural area. We're in a farm area. Kids still don't go outside. I ask every group I take out, at least half the kids have never been in the woods. And if they have, I think it's really interesting that it's either their grandparents or their father's a hunter. Some groups we have that come out here, you can tell that the kids don't get out very much and they get out there and they just really eat it up. They love it. They like the sounds, the smells. They really experience nature and it really leaves an impact on them. There it is right there. Where? See it hopping? Since it's a mammal, how do they get their babies? Eggs or live births? It's a natural touch with a rippling effect as students connect with wildlife. Because they'll all be gone if we don't take care of them. Then carry that connection home. You can't care about something you know nothing of. And so we want to instill in them the love of nature. They're good. They go home and they educate their parents. I know this because I run into those parents out and about and they say, yes, we are recycling now. And that's good. That's If we do nothing but make that happen in some homes, we've done our job. And then some. Many of the group leaders and other beach staff volunteer their time to help the students who, thanks to Bridgestone, don't have to pay to come here. 
This is great that we have this here. It's close by. It's free. It's just amazing. <laughs> I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.